Hi, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel and today it's our reason reads That was terrible So for today door day hmm. So for today's video I have read uh, two books two this one is kind of chunky. Um, kind of new releases, I want to say. Uh, they came out this year, at least. We'll go with that. Let's start with this chunky son of a bitch. So this is The Square of Sevens by Laura Shepard Robinson. Did I know what this book was about before I pre-ordered it? No. Why did I pre-order it? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's that Waterstone signed exclusive thing that gets me every time. So this is what I got. But I was not disappointed. I, it was money well spent. Also, can we appreciate like the end papers? It's one of those like really old paintings. Yeah. Uh, perspective view or of the city of Bath in Somerset Somerset Sure 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 Is there a London one as well? Or is it just I don't know. Raced on the roads of Cornwall, a young girl known only as Red travels from village to village with her fortune telling father, paying their way with an arcane method of cut on Cut, cut on, cut, cut on oh, I can't say words. Um, cut, cut on my cut, cut on my I, whatever. Known as the Square of Sevens, when the luck sours, Red Father befriends a gentleman scholar, offering him an ancient document containing the secret of the Square of Seven, in exchange for the scholar's promise to take Red into his care. Raised as a lady amidst the Georgian splendour of Bath, Red's fortune-telling skills are a delight in polite society, but she cannot ignore the questions that gnaw on her soul. Who was her mother? How did she die? Who are the enemies that her father always feared would find him? These mysteries take her from Bath to London, from the rivalry of the Bartholomew Fair to the grand houses of two of the most powerful families in England, but others have embarked upon their own investigations, determined to locate the stolen secret of the Square of Sevens. Red's, Red's quest attracts their notice, bringing her great danger, but also the possibility of great reward. So, this is very much a mystery set in the... 1700 something does it say of course it doesn't say because that would be too easy for me and I've forgotten so even though we are mostly following Red's point of view we, we don't actually know if she's telling the truth or not we don't even know if she knows the truth like is the truth she's telling actually the truth or is it a lie over her making we don't know it's suspicious all around i mean she seems to be figuring everything out as she goes along and like who she is and where she comes from or like who does who she thinks she is is actually who she is confusion so while she's going through that the family she supposedly belongs to um is a word i guess you can explain used to explain it they're going through their own like fighting for the inheritance of the family uh, basically like who gets to run the family because it's those times it's those times there is honestly so much going on with so many different intrigues going on i had some trouble at times keeping up the there are a lot of players as it were a lot of characters so when it comes to like is red actually related to them or not they need to go by like papers and papers are easily 
destroyed let's say and I kept just wanting to just have a bloody blood test already but you know they didn't have those back then <laughs> they didn't have those and I was like damn could have been so easy could have been so easy but no that would be too easy I suppose so without like spoiling the whole book I do want to question if the ending made sense I mean, it did and it didn't, and I would like some answers. So if you've read the book, please let me know, um, because inquiring minds wants to know. Because I felt, because I kept feeling like the evidence that's being presented wasn't enough. It was like there was something very big missing, but I can't put my finger on it. So I feel like if I were to reread this in the future, which I very very well may, um, so in the beginning of each chapter, there are like little cards, like playing cards, uh, and like a notation telling you what said card means in the deck. And I feel like if I were to reread it, uh, these cards would tell me a lot more about like the chapters ahead especially knowing some bits so i feel like those could be like a bigger clue i do actually feel like i need to reread it at some point you know not now because i just read it and so many books but there there are like bits and pieces that i need to figure out again i suppose and if you read it please help me <laughs> Honestly, please help me. Um, yeah, so like I said, those cards at the beginning, they were very much like a fun little tidbit. Didn't tell me too much about what's happening. Um, oh, here we go. We get, every now and again, we get like a map. Like this is a map of Bath. Uh, there's a map of London somewhere. And... There's like little, there's a family tree as well somewhere. I don't know, somewhere. Um, and I, I so enjoy when they put stuff like that in the book because it kind of, it draws you in a lot more. And also, especially with there being so many characters to keep track of, um, it helped to have that to reference to as well. Even though some of the characters wasn't cool, what it said on the tree. So it was a bit of... Anyway, thoroughly enjoyed this book. And, um... I mean, you should read it if you like a bit of mystery. Intrigue. Madness. What else? Um... Well, I guess there's some murder plots as well. Because they're very rough. <laughs> they're like, well, to get rid of a person, let's just kill him. <laughs> I don't think I would like to have lived in that century. Seems very rough. Also, women weren't like allowed to do much. And... Oh, I should say, so in the end, there's like a historical note. Yeah, historical note, um, which basically claim, proclaim um, that the Square of Seven is actually, like, it's based on a book that I don't think exists anymore, but if it does, it's like one. Okay. Well, finishing my second novel, I did some initial research into 18th century fortune telling, which was when I came across The Square of Sevens by the American author and journalist E. something. <laughs> I can't say that name. Something Stevenson. Uh, the big perpetuated to con. purport. The book purported to contain an 18th century method of katon... Fuck's sake. Now, I'm moving on to In the Lives of Puppets by T.J. Clune. So, it's inspired by the adventures of Pinocchio and the Swiss family Robinson. 
at least that's what it says in back. I mean, yes, in parts, but it's also very much inspired by TJ Klune getting a rumba vacuum cleaner <laughs> and putting little googly eyes on it. Welcome to the heart of a peculiar forest and the beginning of an extraordinary journey. In a small home built into the branches of a tree live a human named Victor and three robots. These are a pleasantly sadistic nurse machine, a small vacuum desperate for love and attention, and a fatherly inventor android named Giovanni Lawson. Together, they're a family hidden and safe. Then Vic salvages an unfamiliar android labelled Hap. He learns that Hap and Geo share a dark past where they hunted humans and Hap unwittingly gives away Geo's location. Before they know it, robots from Geo's former life arrive to capture and return the android to his old laboratory in the city of electric dreams. The rest of the unconventional family must travel across an unforgiving and otherworldly country to rescue Geo from decommissioning or worse, reprogramming. Along the way, Vic must decide if he can handle his feelings for Hap, even if they come with strings attached. So, it's both funny and have very many, very, very, very many annoying moments. Um, like, why is the sadistic nurse called Nurse Ratchet? I mean, I, I kind of get it, but also, why? So, a lot of the time, you don't really get a, like, description of, like, how the androids look. So, I, I guess it's sort of up to the reader to have an imagination as far as that. Uh, they seem to be loads of different kinds of androids. Like, some seem to have skin and such, um, which... I'm not too sure about but you know and some seem to be like semi-human-ish which is kind of how Victor manages to like blend in a bit with the androids while they're going going after Geo as well. One thing I didn't really like because it got annoying it was funny but it got annoying because it was too much of it too much for for me anyway, it's that nurse, nurse Ratchet, she, she like, she's so over-sexualized and she keeps going on and on about Vic and his potential masturbation and Vic is just like, no, no, no. <laughs> and I'm like, why do you need to mention his genitalia every now and again and the fact that he needs to evacuate his bowels <laughs> and it's a perfectly normal human thing but for the androids it's not uh it, it got weird it got very weird at times <laughs> i'm not gonna lie although i will say when like the robots started flirting with each other and we're like flirting mode commence whatever um it was hilarious because it was so it was very robotic let's say that it was very robotic and i guess forced but hilarious because these androids they have feelings okay they have feelings they're almost human they're just not human like very short i have a lot less things to say about this book apparently but in the end of it it was bought both heartwarming and heartbreaking in the sense that Vic is the only human and his purpose in this book seems to be very small. I'm not sure but it feels like him being the only human and the fact that they're alluding to Gio having like kind of smuggled out Vic as what are you before you are a thing <laughs> yeah there's a whole thing about Geo having smuggled Vic out and then kind of growing him in a machine technically because he's an android he can't have kids <laughs> he can't have human kids 
So I feel like there's there should be more to Vic being the only human than just what happens because it feels very small because at the same time they the thing that happens they say that it's his purpose being the only human and I'm like this seems very small I mean it's a big thing but in the grand scheme of things it's very small I, I, I guess I'm a tiny bit disappointed but also such a fun time it was a it was a great time I'm not gonna lie so almost dropped it two books two fairly new books I'm not sure when they came out I could look it up but I don't wanna they came out this year I'm pretty sure <laughs> so a good time read yeah definitely kind of recommend both of them for different reasons um this one for mystery, this one for laughs. So that is the end of this face right now. And uh, yeah, you know, thank you so much for watching. If you've read any of these books, please let me know and we can have a like, conversation about them because that's half the point, isn't it? To chat about it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.